The wonders of ancient Egypt, or Kemet, its true name, are on display at the de Young Museum in San Francisco. The exhibit is called Ramses the Great and the Gold of the Pharaohs. I got to look inside and talk to a scholar about the controversies surrounding the study of history of this ancient land in Africa and its people. A pharaoh is in San Francisco, Ramses II, also known as Ramses the Great. Modern historians place his death more than 1,200 years before the Common Era. That's more than 3,000 years ago. The de Young exhibit was curated by world-renowned archaeologist and Egypt's former Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs, Zahi Hawass, juxtaposing high-tech holograms, virtual reality, alongside ancient treasure. Hawass takes pride in his work and makes no bones about it. This is the best exhibit I've ever seen before. You know, I'm a guy, if you know me, if this exhibit is a piece of shit, I will say it. And I will not care. But this exhibit, in my opinion, it is really the best. In 2009, Hawass led then-President Barack Obama on a tour of the pyramids in Giza. The first black president stopped in his tracks before one of the carved faces. And actually... That looks like me. Look at those ears. <laughs> but Hawass believes that resemblance ends there. And Kemet, which means black land, refers to the dark, rich soil along the Nile, not Obama's African roots. In 2021, he told the Egyptian Daily News, The origin of ancient Egyptians was purely Egyptian based on the discovery made by British Egyptologist Flinders Petrie at Nakata. And this is why ancient Egyptian civilization did not occur in Africa. It only occurred here. Around 1890, Sir William Flinders Petrie led excavations in the Nile River Valley. Based on skulls found in Nakata, Petrie's dynastic race theory credits invaders of a master race for the sophisticated technological advances of Kemet. Yet some of the earliest scholars, from Herodotus of Greece to Count Volney of France and Sir Wallace Budge, they agree with modern Afrocentric scholars and considered the Kingdom of the Pharaohs part of African history. The Nile Valley Collective is a group of such scholars, among them Temple University Associate Professor of Africology and African Studies, Dr. Kamani Nahusi, who spoke to BR from his office in Philadelphia. Dr. Kimani Nehusi, welcome to Black Renaissance. Thank you very much, Jack. You are speaking from Temple University, the home of the first doctoral program in Black Studies. That's correct. It's also the home of the theoretical approach that has become more formalized and organized as Afrocentricity. Now, when we say Afrocentricity, just Give me the layman's version of what that means. Well, that means simply to do the logical thing in the studying of African people and their phenomena. Um, and that means placing the information about African people in African cultural and the historical context. Why do I have to be an Afrocentrist to look at a map and see where Egypt lies? to look at um, the wall paintings and see people who look just like me and just like you, and yet deny that history? The short answer is the work of Eurocentrists. But I think sometimes it's a good thing to take a step back and ask ourselves why. If you look at the history of the world, we're going to understand that Europeans, <laughs> well, they weren't doing anything on, until about 600 years ago. And when they went from Europe, and this is especially Western Europeans, to other parts of the world, the only thing superior they had was firearms. And they used that to impose themselves very violently upon other parts of the world. Now, if you're stealing, murdering, raping, and doing the other things that Europeans did, to establish themselves and the system of rapaciousness that rules most of the world today, they could not 
be abusing African people and yet maintain the truth that Kemet is an African civilization. They had to say negative things. So this is the fundamental reason for all the obfuscations, the denials of the African nature of Kemet. Late Senegalese scholar Sheikh Anta Diop, the country's largest university bears his name. His so-called two-cradle theory reclaims Kemet and posits African and European civilizations developed simultaneously. In 1975, Diop, along with Congolese linguist and philosopher of Kemet, Théophile Obanga, presented that theory to Egyptologists at the UNESCO Symposium in Cairo. It was held by some, but Eurocentric scholars rejected it then and to this day. Still, Diop's work was seminal for Afrocentrists like Dr. Nehusi. Diop showed that Kemet is so integral because it represents African achievement, one of the highest points of African achievement. Kemet is the most known, the most quoted, the most sought after, the most beloved flower of Africa. But it is not the only bloom from the African tree. I remember uh, Dr. Obenga once told me that until Africa is restored to its rightful place in the world, we as, as people out of Africa will never be considered. I think that Professor Obenga is very, very correct. You see, Europeans have destroyed Africa. Europeans and Africans have destroyed Africa. And now they're pointing to Africa and saying, you see, that's what Africans are about. That's all you could achieve. And most of us are so ignorant about our history that we unsuspectingly accept the current deplorable conditions in Africa, including the comparable class of Africans who collude with Arabs and Europeans in the destruction and desecration of themselves. We look at that confusion and that desecration, and we believe that things have always been so. And this is why Kemet, another reason why Kemet is so important, because it contradicts the current lies by looking or presenting Arab people in the roles of ancient Egyptians in many of the films and so on documentaries that are made. Well, Zaire was, and people of that persuasion have a problem. You see, the Arab people only went to modern Egypt and the rest of North Africa en masse during the 6th century AD, after the death of the prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him. So Zahir was, and that whole presentation, people responsible for it, are actually saying that the Arab people were in Kemet centuries, sometimes thousands of thousands. years before they actually got there. Now, these are real magicians. You know, is it magical it, thinking? It, yes. The scholarship is enormous. You know, you these are all books that I just had on my shelf, beginning with the first one, Stolen Legacy. Schools, colleges, community organizations in the area must go to that exhibition led by competent lecturers in Kemet or the study of Kemet and explain to people the real history and significance of that exhibition. It's so essential that we do the work lest we become just another tourist attraction, just another yep. exhibit. Yeah, we mustn't become cannon fodder for tourists attractions that you know 
the whole thing where you come out and you take a bow at the behest of what we imagine to be the necessities of tourism. I mean, we're much better than that. And so Afrocentrists and Eurocentrists will have to agree to disagree. Meanwhile, Hawass beckons everyone to come and see the land of Ramses the Great and all the pharaohs for themselves. Again, it's a message from us in Egypt to all of you to tell you Egypt is safe and come and visit us. Thank you. Definitely a must see. Ramses the Great and the Gold of the Pharaohs will be at the De Young through February 12th. For more information, visit deyoung.famsf.org.